Zika virus outbreak. The reason why Zika was such a huge issue wasn't what it did to a person, but what it did to those who were yet even to be born. The virus, primarily transmitted by the Aedes mosquito, could also be passed from mother to child during pregnancy, leading to severe birth defects and developmental issues in infants. At the height of the Zika outbreak in 2015 to 2016, there was an alarming association with a significant increase in cases of congenital birth defects, particularly my microcephaly in newborns. In Brazil, the largest area of the outbreak, reports of an unprecedented surge in the number of babies born with abnormally small heads and brain damage caused widespread panic among expectant mothers and the general public. Images of infants with microcephaly, a condition associated with incomplete brain development, flooded the media, amplifying the fears and anxieties surrounding the outbreak. The uncertainty regarding the long-term consequences of Zika virus infection coupled with a lack of an effective vaccine or treatment at the time, fueled a sense of helplessness and vulnerability. Pregnant women were advised to take extreme precautions, such as avoiding travel to affected areas, using insect repellents, and employing measures to prevent mosquito bites. The fact that the Aedes mosquito was so common in these areas made the Zika outbreak even worse. Middle East Respiratory Syndrome The Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, was a viral respiratory illness caused by a novel coronavirus coronavirus, first identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Just like anywhere else in the world, the people of Saudi Arabia had a close relationship with animals of their choice, camels. Saudi Arabia is mainly a desert, and the camel is among the only animals in the world built for the desert. From one animal, the people living here could get transport, meat, and milk. Because of this close contact for prolonged periods, it would take just one mutation for the virus to find the perfect chance to jump the ship from animal to man. In most cases, the symptoms were those of a bad flu. Still, in severe cases, the infection could rapidly progress to pneumonia and acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, where there is widespread lung inflammation leading to difficulty breathing. In ARDS, the tiny air sacs in the lungs, called alveoli, become filled with fluid, making it hard for oxygen to reach the bloodstream and depriving vital organs of oxygen. MERS was particularly dangerous for specific individuals because of its high fatality rate. According to the World Health Organization, the estimated fatality rate for MERS was approximately 35%, significantly higher than that of other respiratory illnesses like influenza or even the SARS outbreak in 2013. The elderly, individuals with chronic disease such as diabetes, cancer, or chronic lung disease, and those with compromised immune systems were at the highest risk of severe complications and death from MERS. Between April 2012 and November 2019, the WHO reported a total of 2,519 laboratory-confirmed cases of MERS, including 866 associated deaths, representing a fatality rate of approximately 34.3%. SARS. SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, emerged in late 2002 in the Guangdong province of China. It was a previously unknown strain of virus that spread rapidly through close human-to-human -human contact. For our purposes, a man in the Guangdong province, let's know him as Patient X, would be among the first to wake up one morning feeling unusually exhausted and feverish. He brushed it off as a common cold, but as the day progressed, he began experiencing a persistent dry cough and tightness in his chest. Initially, he thought it might be the flu, but the symptoms grew more severe, making it increasingly difficult for him to breathe. Over the next few days, the man's condition deteriorated rapidly. He developed a high fever, body aches, and a deep, hacking cough that left him gasping for air. Concerned, his family rushed him to the hospital where doctors were confused by his worsening respiratory distress. As more cases with similar symptoms began emerging in the region, healthcare workers realized they were dealing with a new and potentially deadly respiratory illness. The man's condition continued to decline, and he required supplemental oxygen to help him breathe. Chest x-rays revealed pneumonia-like infiltrates in his lungs, and medical staff struggled to manage his rapidly deteriorating condition. Despite receiving the best available care, the man's body could not overcome the severe respiratory failure caused by this new virus. The SARS outbreak quickly spread across several countries, primarily through international travel. By the time it was contained in July 2003, 
It had affected 26 countries across multiple continents. According to the World Health Organization, the SARS epidemic resulted in 8,096 confirmed cases and 774 deaths worldwide with a fatality rate of approximately 9.6%. Ebola outbreak. At the height of the Ebola pandemic, almost everyone in the world was paranoid because of the terrifying and seemingly uncontrollable nature of the outbreak, a disease that could make victims bleed from every hole in their body and cause unbearable pain was all the news could talk about. The images and stories emerging from the center of the outbreak in West Africa showed overwhelmed healthcare facilities, healthcare workers becoming infected, and bodies piled up as the virus killed even more people. And with most of the public often receiving wrong information about how the disease could affect healthcare workers wearing full hazmat suits, the paranoia that anyone coming from Africa could have it reached new heights as the World Health Organization announced that the Ebola outbreak in West Africa had resulted in a total of 28,616 reported cases and 11,310 deaths across the three countries. The outbreak was believed to have started in December 2013 in Guinea, where the first cases of the deadly Ebola virus disease were reported. However, it wasn't until March 2014 that the outbreak was officially recognized, and by that time, the virus had already spread to neighboring Liberia and Sierra Leone. The initial symptoms of Ebola included fever, headache, muscle pain, weakness, fatigue, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and unexplained bleeding or bruising. These symptoms typically appear between 2 to 21 days after exposure to the virus. As the disease progresses, if you were the unlucky 35% that had caught the more virulent strain, you might get the worst symptom yet, bleeding everywhere. It might start subtly, a trickle of blood from your nose, a tinge of red in your vomit, but soon it could be from everywhere, your gums, your eyes, even places you wouldn't expect. And the worst part is that even if you survived the disease, you'd only be partially immune to that particular strain of Ebola, and you'd still have to worry about the other five. But with the introduction of vaccines, the cases of Ebola would soon reduce, and outbreaks would eventually stop. Yellow Fever in 2015, men and women all over the Democratic Republic of Congo (DRC) and Angola began to have high fevers, chills, and severe headaches. While a majority of them dismissed it as a usual flu that started around that time, as it was the rainy season. However, as the days passed, their conditions rapidly deteriorated, with some developing jaundice, a telltale sign of yellow fever. When patients came to the hospitals in the affected regions, medical staff were overwhelmed by the influx of patients exhibiting the classic symptoms of yellow fever, high fever, nausea, vomiting, and the unmistakable yellowing of the skin and eyes. Healthcare facilities, particularly in remote areas, would struggle to cope with the surge of patients, many of whom would require intensive care and supportive treatment. The lack of specific antiviral treatments for yellow fever would further complicate efforts to manage the outbreak. As the virus spread rapidly across borders, facilitated by the movement of people and the presence of the mosquito carrier, health authorities in both the DRC and Angola scrambled to implement emergency vaccination campaigns. However, the limited global supply of yellow fever vaccines would pose a significant challenge, leaving many communities vulnerable to the outbreak. Despite the efforts of international organizations and aid workers to support the affected countries, the outbreak would continue to take a heavy toll. By the time it was under control, the 2016 yellow fever outbreak in the DRC and Angola would result in 965 confirmed cases, with 130 37 deaths, according to the World Health Organization. Swine Flu The swine flu started in early 2009 and quickly spread across the globe. It was a new strain of the influenza virus that combined genes from human, swine, and bird influenza viruses. The epidemic got its name from the theory that the strain came from the close contact with pigs in Mexico because the pigs are generally known to be dirty animals that more often than not are known not to be too particular about their hygiene. Hence, it just made it the perfect breeding ground for all sorts of viruses capable of unlimited mutations. The initial symptoms of the H1N1 virus were similar to those of seasonal influenza, including fever, cough, sore throat, body aches, headaches, chills, and fatigue. 
fatigue. However, some individuals, particularly those with underlying health conditions, experienced more severe symptoms such as pneumonia and respiratory failure. As the virus spread rapidly across countries and continents facilitated by international travel, it became a global health concern. The World Health Organization declared it a pandemic in June 2009, the first influenza pandemic in over 40 years. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, it is estimated that between 151,700 and 575,400 people died worldwide from the H1N1 virus during the first year of the pandemic. In the United States alone, the CDC estimates that between April 2009 and April 2010, there were approximately 60.8 million cases of H1N1, resulting in 274,304 hospitalizations and 12,469 deaths. Chikungunya. The chikungunya virus outbreak is an ongoing global health concern with multiple outbreaks occurring since 2004. With this, mosquito-borne viral disease is currently affecting millions of people worldwide. Once the virus jumped to urban mosquito populations, it found an ideal environment to spread rapidly among human population. The ease of international travel and the widespread distribution of the Aedes mosquitoes facilitated the virus's spread to other regions, leading to outbreaks in Africa, Asia, the Americas, and part of Europe. While the acute phase of the illness can be excruciating, the worst aspect of chikungunya is that in some people they develop chronic, long-lasting joint pain that can persist for months or even even years after the initial infection. Meaning if you were the unlucky percentage to contract this disease once, you'd be in constant and uncomfortable pain for almost the rest of your life. Coupled with a lack of an effective treatment or vaccine, as the virus spread across regions, reports of widespread outbreaks and the agonizing symptoms experienced by patients fueled a sense of panic and anxiety. Recent studies have shown that chikungunya has affected over 1.7 million people in the Americas alone since its introduction in 2013. 13. With all these long-lasting issues, the best way currently would be to avoid mosquitoes at all costs. Measles. Despite measles being a disease that has an easy-to-access vaccine, there are still hundreds of outbreaks worldwide, particularly because, paradoxically, those affected the most are either too poor to afford it or just don't believe in vaccines. Measles is highly contagious and can easily be transmitted through direct contact with respiratory droplets or through the air when an infected person coughs or sneezes. The fact that it remains airborne for up to two hours means that once an outbreak starts in an unvaccinated population, little can be done to stop it. After a few days, a red blotchy rash appears, starting on the face and spreading downward to the rest of the body. In some cases, where bad sanitation meets bad luck, certain individuals who might have a weakened immune system can get a lethal strain of the virus, which can lead to severe complications, including severe pneumonia, encephalitis, brain inflammation, and death. In recent years, several measles outbreaks have occurred worldwide, often originating from imported cases in travelers or migration patterns. The major ones are the 2019 measles outbreak in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where over 6,000 cases and 89 deaths were reported, and the 2018 to 2019 measles outbreak in the Philippines, which resulted in over 33,000 cases and 594 deaths. Dengue fever. Dengue fever is a viral disease transmitted once again by Aedes mosquitoes. Usually, these mosquitoes breed in stagnant water sources, such as puddles, water tanks, and discarded containers that can collect rainwater. Outbreaks of dengue fever typically occur in tropical and subtropical regions, where the climate and environmental conditions favor the mosquito to thrive. The dengue virus has four different strains of infection, with one strain providing lifelong immunity against that particular strain, but not against the other three. This means that individuals can be infected with dengue fever multiple times, as many times as you come in contact with these mosquitoes. The disease spreads through the bite of an infected Aedes mosquito. When a mosquito bites an individual infected with the dengue virus, the virus enters the mosquito's system. After an incubation period of 8 to 10 days, the mosquito can transmit the virus to other individuals through its bite. The symptoms of dengue fever typically appear within 4 to 7 days after being bitten bitten by an infected mosquito. Common symptoms include high fever, severe headache, pain behind the eyes, and skin rashes. Sometimes dengue 
fever can progress to a more severe form called dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. With this, you'd enter the worst stages, with bleeding plasma leakage where the virus can cause a drop in platelet levels, leading to bleeding and clotting issues, and your organs being basically shot with these viruses destroying them, which will almost always lead to death. Preventing dengue fever outbreaks usually involves controlling the mosquito population by eliminating all breeding sites, using insecticides, and making sure there aren't spots for them to hide in. Thank you.